<laughs> it is week 12. Week 12? Week 12 of marathon training. <laughs> we kind of hit a bump in the road. Life happened. It did. <laughs> Which made us realize we need to share some health tips with you. Mm -hmm. So stick around for this video. We're going to cover everything from head to toe. <laughs> All right, so, you know, we're out there, we're running, we run a lot, we get a lot of sun. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was one of my moles that had been checked years before and actually biopsy removed, uh, came back. Uh, now, that initial biopsy uh, came back as it's just a mole, uh, but it came back. So I had it checked uh, and uh, this time, the biopsy revealed that it uh, was a melanoma, and that's not good. Uh, so I had to have it uh, removed. Now, uh, the surgery was uh, pretty intense. Uh, uh, get ready. They didn't knock him out for it. No, they did not knock, they, they did not knock me out for it. Get ready. Uh, here's Look a, away if you're squeamish. Yeah, here's a picture of uh, what I looked like uh, right after surgery. So what they did was they, uh, they cut my head open, they removed the melanoma, and then they stitched me back up. Uh, the good news is they got it all. And the even better news is that it was very, very shallow. Uh, so uh, it didn't try to grow down into me, but rather it was just kind of uh, on the uh, skin. So uh, if you have any moles at all, please, please, uh, make an appointment with a dermatologist and have them look at it because we're out in the sun a lot and uh, that's not good have a dermatologist check your moles even if you think it's just a freckle it doesn't hurt to get checked out it doesn't hurt to be uh, kind of a, a preemptive about making sure that you're okay and if there's any question and it needs to be biopsied by all means do it uh, it's a lot better uh, than letting it go and having it get worse. So this week uh, we didn't get to go out and run uh, But we planned for it last week. That's why last week we ran 13 miles. Yeah, we flip-flopped our long run weeks Yeah, because we figured Wouldn't really feel like running 13 yeah. miles. David has another one that's on his side So we're definitely not running until everything's like yeah, and, and and the thing about that one is uh, that's not in the Sun, right? It's always mm -hmm. covered and, and you'll notice in some of my pre uh, previous videos or even in our uh, uh, You know when we're running uh, I wear uh, rash guards mm -hmm. uh, because I uh, want to protect my skin So if you don't start using uh, some form of sun protection and uh, Just just get checked out. It, it's really really important because we want to run and uh, we want to run as uh, as many years as possible. So that's part one, the head. Part two, the toe. All right. So as I mentioned last week, my feet are killing me. Yeah. My feet are killing me. Okay. So we had kind of planned this week to go uh, shoe shopping. Yeah. So we went to our favorite running store. It's the place I've been going to for years. They were the first ones that got me fitted in my. Um, well, the, the first time I, I paid more than like $40 for running shoes, they were the ones who got me fitted in those. Um, and we kind of went through the whole process again. So uh, the way that whole thing worked, I walked in, first thing, you know, remember when you were a, a kid and you put your little foot on a little thingy and they slide the things and like get your shoe size? I hadn't had that done since I was, well, a kid. Because, yeah. you know, you reach, I don't know, age 14 and then you just have size 9 feet for the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, more on that later. Uh, I bought some huge shoes today. Huge. But with a professional's leadership. Dang it. Yeah. So, you know, they measure your feet and like, okay, it turns out I have almost a full size separating my right foot and my left foot. That's fun. Um, average width, that's fine. Another neat thing they did though, and this was the first time they've ever done this for me there. Um, they had me stand on this like heat activated mat to check my arches. 
So the guy, you know, he's professional, he does this all day, every day. He, he mentioned just glancing at my feet, he thought I had kind of lower arches. But once I stood on that little heat activated map, it was evident that, you know, my feet are like barely touching the ground over here and then nothing in the arch area. I have some pretty high arches. And so that helped inform his uh, suggestions, his shoes that he selected for me to try on, um, knowing that I, I need a, a little more support potentially there in the middle. Um, so he, he initially brought out three pairs of shoes. Uh, one of them was my old pair of shoes. I guess, first of all, I did discuss with them, like, here are my old shoes. Here are the issues I have with them um, and have had with them. And that was that after that long run on Saturday, my feet were killing me and my hips and my knees were hurting. And that until they broke in, my, my toes would kind of fall asleep. Um, you know, after like three miles, my toes would be asleep for the rest of the run. And that, that would happen for, I don't know, several months before I broke in the shoes. He told me that can happen when the toe is a little narrow, like your, your toes kind of get constricted there. And I had never noticed that my old shoes were a little kind of pointier on the end. So at any rate, that was something to consider as we were looking at shoes. So he brought me a few pairs. Um, I tried on the first one and he had me kind of run and run back. So he watched my, what my feet do when I run. He's looking for a pronation, right? So he was able to tell me that, yeah, my feet kind of turn in a little bit when I run. Because of your arches. Because of my arches, because I need more support. Uh, so what he did was uh, he grabbed some inserts, a little like arch support, and it was like, that's the first time anybody has ever offered that to me there, and it made just a world of difference. So I tried out a few different pairs, um, you know, kind of whittled them down, made my decision, finally decided on a pair of Brooks shoes, my first time buying some Brooks shoes. Uh, they're super comfortable. I love the colors. I've had a beef with shoe manufacturers for years <laughs> yeah. that women's shoes only come in pink. Yeah. These are purple. Yeah. So I'll take that. Um, yeah, they're really, they're really nice. And I got the inserts as well, the insoles. And they feel so good. I can't wait to go give them a, give them a try. Yeah, you can even see, because uh, uh, I was standing there with yeah, him. Yeah, David was watching the whole thing, right? You know, watching your feet. Mm -hmm. They were they were kind of going inward, mm -hmm. and then once he uh, not only changed the shoe but, mm -hmm. but put those inserts in, then yeah. you could see they. So he had me run with one insert in and one mm -hmm. out. So even I, looking at the video, can see that yeah. I look a little, yeah. a little like lopsided. And and Laura took me there when I started running mm -hmm. with her, uh, and I was fitted there years ago mm -hmm. for my first pair. Made a huge difference yeah. with just the way my feet felt mm -hmm. and you know if you're gonna be out there for hours right you need to have somebody <laughs> Good foundation yeah you need to have somebody who knows what they're doing yeah. take a look at your feet this way uh, measure your feet uh, and then give you options mm -hmm. for Based making on sure your feet. yeah for making sure that yeah. when you're out there uh, that you're not struggling because you're wearing the wrong shoes right. so really really important yeah stuff. and I don't think this is unique to us but when I first started running when you first started running we just kind of went to Academy and yeah. bought some shoes that looked okay and kind of felt okay. I kind of like this color. I'll yeah, so here's what happened with me. I don't think you had anything quite so dramatic happen, but when I first started running, I ended up with a stress fracture in my like leg, my shin. Um, and I also had my first and my God, I hope only toenail situation because my toe was bumping the end of my shoe and I ended up losing a toenail. I know people say that's like a rite of passage for runners, but it was not cool and I don't want it to happen again. So since then, I have been wearing uh, proper shoes. <laughs> so no more problems like that, which is great. Yeah. So highly recommend. I know it's an investment and I, I'm not even gonna say how much money I spent today. The inserts added a little bit to the total, but I mean, we're gonna be running between now and the marathon hundreds of miles. So, you know, we need to, Hey, look, if you're a runner Hi. and you want to buy a cheap pair of gloves, go for it. <laughs> but don't skimp <laughs> on, on your shoes because <laughs> we're running. <laughs> so really important. Yeah. We, we wanted to share this with you. You know, life happens. Yeah. Uh, we hit a bump in the road. Uh, I really want to uh, get back to training. Um, hopefully the doctor will give me the go ahead oh, soon. Stitches come out on Monday. Uh, and we've got some new shoes. Uh, hopefully the pain's gonna go away yeah. and we can concentrate on our first full marathon. It's getting closer and closer. We hope you continue training. We hope that if life does give you a bump, uh, that you just kind of stick with it. Uh, hope that these uh, tips uh, help you 
And if you have any suggestions, let us know. And let us know how you're doing in your training. Like uh, we've said, every video, no matter what we do, <laughs> it's always an adventure, always an adventure with you. I think that, and it's still not uh, like it's still not excessively big on this foot. Okay. Here. So I would say for sure. Okay.